Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. In our program today we're talking about low blood pressure. Well, one may be thinking low blood pressure because the common one is high blood pressure. But still, we have to talk about low blood pressure where in some cases some people are suffering from this disease. My name is Sarah Makondeta.
My name is Dr. Lucinda Manda Taylor. I work at the College of Medicine. I have a PhD in bioethics. I also have certification in instructing aerobics. Uh, the importance of exercise in one's life, how is that important? I think exercise is um, an important part of a healthy lifestyle um, because it helps ward off certain diseases. Not only is it about warding off certain diseases, but it also helps you look good, feel good, uh, and also have the energy to carry out your day-to-day -day activities. So not only for disease, but also looking good and feeling good. You seemed to have enjoyed what was happening, the history behind that. Okay, so I've been instructing classes since I came back from South Africa, where I qualified. I did a Reebok certification course in aerobics. And I came back to Malawi and started instructing here at the sports complex in 2009. I have been doing this for over, so for now, for 10 years. Wow. And I do have a passion for what I, what I do. I've always instructed on the Tuesday and a Thursday class, but now I've becoming a mother, I've whittled it down to a Tuesday class. You sort of touched on the issue of maybe keeping fit and in relation to a healthy um, lifestyle. In terms of eliminating certain diseases, what can you talk about the diseases that exercise helps you stay away I think the, 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 the important disease that I can think of at the moment is like hypertension. Mm -hmm. So heart diseases are, are um, a number one killer. So exercise helps you burn fat, uh, lose weight, and also keep the cholesterol off the heart. Because the more you exercise, the more your heart pumps, the more the blood flows through the body. So you are then eliminating that coat of fat that lies around the heart. There's also diabetes, um, particularly if, it, if you're diabetic or even HIV positive. There's nothing that is not beneficial from exercise. So anybody with a disease, can exercise. Of course, the intensity may vary between um, people. A word of advice to people out there who don't really think exercise is very important. I think if you have um, uh, 24 hours in a day, and if you want at least to make one hour of that day something that you do for yourself, we're all uh, working people, we're all mothers, but for the sake of our sanity, for the sake of our mental agility, for the sake of our physical appearance, for the sake of our health, I think one hour a day is enough to set aside. Usually in standard aerobics um, um, exercise textbooks, they all say about 40 minutes. 40 to 45 minutes is a good amount of time to, to actually have exercise because as you hit um, above 20 minutes in an exercise routine or an exercise class, you start to burn fat. So when you get to 40 minutes, you've actually worked off a lot of fat. So 45 to 60 minutes is a good amount of time to set aside for one's personal mental and physical health. the program we will now talk about issues of nutrition in relation to low blood pressure and in this segment I'm joined by Arthur Bunyani who is a registered dietitian currently working with Blantyre Adventist Hospital as a nutritionist. Welcome on this program. Thank you. 
So, we are talking about low blood pressure, which is mostly not so common. Mm -hmm. But still, we have to talk about it. Now, going to the issues of diet in relation to low blood pressure, are there specific dietary needs for somebody who's uh, diagnosed with a low blood pressure? All right. Um, basically, I'll say there, there's no like specific diet mm -hmm. for someone with a uh, low blood pressure. Basically, because uh, low blood pressure comes in because of uh, uh, secondary to something, it will be uh, that the patient that the person has got a certain condition. Mm -hmm. That's what causing the patient to have low blood pressure. So basically, if the causing agent is treated, and then the blood pressure comes normal. Mm -hmm. But then uh, there are specific conditions where, like people who exercise a lot, like athletes, yeah. usually they may have uh, lower blood pressure than normal. Mm -hmm. Children sometimes they've got low blood pressure than the normal one. Mm -hmm. But basically the major majority of uh, those who have got low blood pressure are those who are which is coming in because of secondary or something. Mm -hmm. Not just like specific. All right. Yeah. So maybe what are the causes of low blood pressure? There are several causes. As I said, uh, mainly secondary something. I pointed out about athletes and children. But then sometimes it could be that you have got a uh, nutritional deficiencies mm -hmm. like a vitamin B12 deficiency or folic deficiency mm -hmm. which is causing anemia and that anemia is what is bringing the, the low blood pressure. Right. Um, sometimes um, you may be sick, very sick with an infection, mm -hmm. severe infection. Right. You may also have uh, low blood pressure. So doctors in the hospital I think manage that one. Right. Yeah. When we talk about high blood pressure we have signs like maybe severe headache mm. things like those. Mm. What are the signs and symptoms that come with low blood pressure? Right. Just like the opposite of high blood pressure, low blood pressure usually present with uh, dizziness. You can have dizziness, uh, blood vision sometimes. Uh, like uh, there's this other condition called hypostatic hypotension mm -hmm. where you stand for so long and then the coordination between the heart and then the brain is disturbed. Okay. You may also have a uh, low blood pressure in those cases. In those cases. Yeah, so usually there's always something behind causing it. Yeah. It's like I said earlier on, it's it's not something that's common, right? Mm. Uh, the the percentage of someone to actually have low blood pressure. What leads to low blood pressure? Uh, specifically, I think that no, I wouldn't find specific data about how many mm -hmm. was uh, low blood pressure. But then there are conditions which happens. Um, as I said, there are specific groups who may, which may have that condition. But then coming back to dietary issue, yes. uh, like there are some foods like caffeine, caffeinated foods, yeah. I talk of coffee, those which have caffeine in it, uh, they can cause a raised blood pressure, which cannot be permanent, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's the opposite of what we get. We, we advise people of high blood pressure not to take. Mm -hmm. What can make those people with low blood pressure to, to have their uh, blood pressure raised? Right. Yeah. So they're working interchangeably. Interchangeably. Yes. Mm. Uh, also, again, on the issue. Of Going back to the issue of high blood pressure in relation to maybe the opposite of uh, low blood pressure. Mm. In terms of high blood pressure, we have maybe issues where someone can lead to stroke. Mm. What can low blood pressure lead to? Yeah, uh, it can lead to condition like you can be in shock because uh, sometimes there, there isn't much oxygen reaching the brain. Um, and then maybe you can have shock condition where someone can even die through that low blood pressure. Especially if maybe it's caused by maybe loss of blood mm -hmm. uh, or reduced volume of blood. Mainly that's when you can have. Yeah. Being the opposite somehow of uh, high blood pressure, the issue of salt intake. Yes. Does it play a role in someone who's got a low blood pressure? Yeah, as I said, it's not a common condition. Yeah, and uh, the issue of salt and high blood pressure is that salt increases the blood volume mm -hmm. so it's like when uh, you've got a low blood pressure i would say it's that, that you should be taking much salt yeah. to counter like that of course the effect would be, wouldn't be that permanent mm -hmm. yeah so salt intake i would say 
which wouldn't be a solution to, to, to it, but the basic is to find out what's causing the low blood pressure and treat that one. Uh, going back to the same issue in relation to uh, high blood pressure, we'll keep going back to it because mm. it's pretty much the opposite yeah, of yeah, blood pressure. Yeah. Um, you, there are certain scenarios where someone has got high blood pressure and they're, they're on medication, worst case scenario, they have to take medicine. The issue of low blood pressure, is it also a situation where someone can permanently have it and they would be put on medication to raise the, 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 the low blood pressure issue? Basically, you know, it's usually coming up as a secondary to something. Uh, so it's a once of uh, Yes, yeah. It's not like um, you, you've been diagnosed, like always you have having a low blood yeah. pressure, and then yeah. the, the, you take these medications. Basically, that's not how it goes. Usually, there's something causing that one. So if that something is treated, treated. and then you your blood pressure will be... So raised. in most cases, low blood pressure is always triggered by something? Definitely, I would say, I couldn't make sense like that. That's, how, that's the condition we see in the hospitals. All right. Yeah. So going back to the same issue of uh, dietary needs, if you could also just specify that maybe there's really no need for specific type of foods. I just wanted to understand that part. Okay. Like someone who's having lower than normal, blood pressure mm -hmm. basically the first thing is to f go to the hospital have them uh, examined mm -hmm. they ha must have several tests on them mm -hmm. to find out what's really causing there are several causes of that mm -hmm. what's really causing that and then once that is treated uh, that, uh, the low blood pressure will be sorted out for the specific groups like children and athletes usually it's because of the uh, body composition how the vessels are, uh, that's why they, they may have uh, that low. But we may say, we may, found, we, may, we may have a normal range for those specific categories as well, which mm -hmm. is normal, though it's lower than the majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lastly, on the issue of prevention, it may not be common, but there are certain instances where some people may have it. Mm -hmm. The way to prevent it, the way to avoid it. All right, like I mentioned about. Uh, nutrition deficiencies yes. like uh, vitamin B12, folic acid. Mm -hmm. The best thing is having a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. uh, have a balanced diet, I think that will help us uh, not to have this condition which may lead to uh, low blood pressure. That was Arthur Bunyani, a registered dietitian who's currently working with Blandia Adventist Hospital, who is shedding more light on the issue of low blood pressure. While it may not be a common problem, but there are certain instances where some people out there may have this particular disease. That's all we had in this edition of Healthy Living. Be there again next week, same time, same place, and another edition of this program comes your way. Remember, a little exercise does not hurt anyone. My name is Sarah Magondeta.